we are 10 videos into the series, and it's still anybody's game. I don't think anyone has any real idea of who's going to win this. I mean, yes, you could argue the Boer, the Chin, maybe the Sue, but honestly, those arguments still don't have that much evidence to stand on. I don't think they have that much leg room to stand. Pff, I don't know what I'm trying to say, but you know what I'm you know what I'm trying to say. You guys know what I'm trying to say. You guys can pretty much read my mind now. When Cracklord takes over, you guys know what Cracklord meant to say. There are a lot of different theories out there, but the fact that no one is really over like five five cities, right? Well, I mean the Sioux are at five. It's mo there's there's a few there's a few civs at six. I think Argentina is one of them if they hold on at the last second to to this siege, which it will be very close. Um, and there's yeah, a there's a handful at, at five or six that you could maybe argue for, but the fact that everybody else is like at three or four, how much of a lead really is that? It's two. It's turned two fifty, and it's just incredible that we have no idea um, of any possible power rankings. Um, and I'd love to know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Uh, please, if you could maybe rank your top three right now. Top five is a little bit too difficult, I think, but uh, we will go over the demographics, even though I do think the demographics is going to lean towards one or two sieves. To me, it's it it's still not going to change my thought process. I'm still going to think it's still anybody's game. So let's go over the, go over the demographics. I'm sure we're going to see the suit. Okay, the, the demographics are pretty freaking divided too. Oh, geez. The Boer at 14 million population. We've got the Sioux, number one in crop yields, with 156. I wish they'd give a, a unit for that. Oh, yeah, it's brush brushels, which I have no idea. Bushels, I'm sorry. Which I have no idea what that is, but that shouldn't be surprising, coming from me. Manufactured goods by the Moguls. I do like that the Moguls have a category, because I do really like the Moguls. For me, I I didn't mention them in, in when I was going around talking about certain civs, but... Uh, I, I, I have them on my star list. They're definitely in my own power rankings. I'd, I'd put them in my top three, I think, as an underdog, as a black horse, or a dark horse, same thing. The Boer, also number one in GNP. Uh, we've got the Sioux, number one in land. We've got the Congo, number one in soldiers, 202,000. Wow. Uh, remember, all these averages are set off by my crappy nation, so, <laughs> so you gotta, you gotta consider that. Uh, approval does not matter. And literacy, still number one from Egypt and they don't even have riflemen what's up with that what is up with that you still have musket men Kiev has riflemen what are you doing with your life uh, I'm loving the Arabian Peninsula right now it's just completely divided in half I think that's very cool the Ashanti versus the Confederate States oh Bulgaria has a uh, settler and this is the point in the game where I think we see some really strange settlements by the way it's about halfway through this campaign I mean things have been running pretty smoothly knock on wood um, hopefully they continue to run smoothly, uh, because if they do, that means that we should be able to go to 500 or maybe further, turn 500 or further. Yep, the Maori are going to keep this city, it looks like. We only saw one city fall in that last episode, which I thought was crazy. Actually, no, 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 no. I'm wrong about that. I was wrong about that back then, too, because uh, this Chukchi city fall fell. But that really, I was kind of a big deal, but it wasn't as massive of uh, the other possibilities that we were starting to see. Ger Germany's going to try to approach Novgorod, but without any sort of open borders agreement with Romania, I don't think that's going to work out, dude. Hitler, you have, you've disappointed a lot of people, and I don't know... I'm sure there's a lot of people that wish they could take their pick back. That really could have changed the whole game for him, though. I do want to mention that. I'm not trying to rub it in for anybody, because I was... I was uh, don't get me wrong, I was... Considering picking Hitler too, I just knew everyone was going to pick him. Um, but that really could have changed the game for him. He grabs Paris. It would have been at like 8 population. And maybe he would have fixed these pillage tiles. Because uh, definitely Louis XIV is not making France great again, great again. If I could just beat a dead horse there. Beat a dead slogan horse. So, I don't know why he's not fix fixing these pillage tiles. I, may I think it's because he has no workers. For some reason, this French mod... I, I don't think has uh, they they had a worker clearly because they have mines, but they deleted them for some reason. Maybe they wanted the you know maybe they wanted their entire economy to be put to their military. It's a it's a reasonable request. I think Rome is fixing their pillages, kind of. Yeah, they are. 
Um, another city that has been exchanged hands due to a peace deal. This time to Romania. Did I mention that before? When did that when did that happen? It's still in resistance. Oh, okay, that just happened. Oh, that just happened like right now. Romania has been at war with Rome for a really long time. And uh, he was close to taking Rome. But now he has... Okay, so if, if Romania can somehow take Rome within a relatively like 50 to 75 turns, I'm going to really like Romania's chances. Four cities. I mean, he's got he's to annex these cities because he only has two right now under his belt. Yeah, see? Yeah, Stalin does not want anything else to do with Kiev, which is smart. Because Kiev's been holding... Kiev's actually started to push... I think they would have started pushing into Moscow. They're very close to pushing into Moscow. And the border gore is real. At this point in the campaign, the border gore is super real. Let's go and check in on Argentina. I don't think you can do it. Argentina reinforced too quickly. You reinforced a little bit too quick quickly. Oh man. Carol's uh Carol's got a pretty good navy. Surprised that they're not attacking this coastal city. It's right there. Mexico has made peace with somebody uh, with somebody that really wasn't even close by to them. So good for you, Mexico. Good for you. Finland's made peace with France. And Cordoba was just settled. So Spain also being, I think, needs to be super considered for the power rankings. Spain now at six cities as well. They also have annexed almost, they yeah, well, besides Versailles, uh, they've, they've got five cities under their control. Although Cordoba's going to be a pretty crappy city, I think. It's possible that they might not if they expand fast enough. California and Chile have peaced out. Confederate States just chilling because uh, this is kind of an interesting location here in North America where you have the Confederate States with, with an okay Navy. I mean, they're pro I'm sorry, with an okay Army, they're probably a little bit behind in terms of technology. But you can't really go after Texas. That would be a stalemate. And, and America also has been doing a good job here with almost just a single city. I mean, let's exclude New York somewhat. We have to somewhat exclude New York. It'd be tough. Because, you know, if Washington was coastal, it would have made, you know, New York a little bit more powerful. Because then you would be able to pump out, you know, you'd have pretty much two naval ports. But now it only has one and New York's only at six population. It's not the, not the best thing ever. Wonder built by Russia. Texas seems like they might have the military to stand up to the Sioux if there were to be a war between those two. But it would still be close. Oh, you know, the Sioux are still after the Chinook. But the, Sh the Schnook are dealing with their own fortress as well. They've got a pretty hardcore fortress here. Egypt and uh, Moria back at war with Byzantium. But Byzantium is safe. I'm surprised Bulgaria hasn't been the one. I figured it'd be Bulgaria to be the one to, to take over Byzantium. That's a dual war. That's kind of a team war. So uh, it's not a coalition. It's unlikely that Bulgaria joins in. I think the Turks and Byzantium have been at war for a long time. They can't do anything with just this one tile. And all the mountains, too, just kind of really screws them there. Let's scroll around. Ah, oh, a little Tur Turkestan. Kazakhstan. I, I really like this little area. I probably should have considered them to where I would live. I asked you guys earlier, like, where would you live in this map? Turkestan would be really cool. I mean, in between these mountains. I mean, there's not really much water around, but... Let's let's imagine for a second that maybe this these mountains generate some sort of water flow from the from the snow. Maybe in this game, I'm sure in, I'm sure in real life they do definitely. So Germany, you just peaced out with Kiev. That's fine, because I, okay, well, hmm, <laughs> well, hmm. I have absolutely never seen the AI do this this much. I don't know if it's because of the mods. I'm assuming it is because of the mods, but I've never seen the AI piece out for so many cities. I wouldn't be surprised. Actually, yeah, I think my bet is definitely that there has been more peace deals for cities than cities have been actually taken over in this campaign so far. 
So borders continue to change and things continue to change, but yeah, because there's really only been a handful of there's I bet you less than like a dozen cities taken by by conquest, and there have been several taken through peace deals. So now we have Nazi Germany, who who disappointed a lot of people in the last one, but they just peaced out with Kiev for Novgorod. So Germany now controls most of you know northern Euro Europe excluding excluding Sweden Finland and Norway I don't know why I did that in between because it's Sweden Norway and Finland so excluding them uh, they, they kind of have a lot of northern Europe and then they have this city that they took away from Bulgaria oh this is weird this is so weird this is like the strangest this is the strangest game I've seen okay who is that the Ayubid yes the Ayubid now now, if they have if they have open borders, maybe they could do some damage. I don't think they do, though. Yeah, I I, I don't think that they they do. Oman still holding people back, even though they're fighting uh, the Australian natives and their colonies in Eastern Africa, which has been one of the stranger which well, yeah one of the other stranger things that have happened so far. Congo still trying to settle. Looks like they tried to get. Tried to grab Madagascar. No, these, city, these cities were settled a long time. Madagascar was was settled by the Boer a long time ago. The Congo just needed some more room, I guess. The Congo have a nice navy. Kazakhstan and Byzantium. Yeah, this is this is not bad for the Congo only having one, you know, annexed uh, coastal city. Whoa. Okay, now everyone's going after Russia again. Uh, and that's Peter's Russia, but he's super safe. Unless, wait, is stalling? Well, I don't know if he's super safe. Safe, safe. That's fine. We could say safe too. I'll, I'll allow it. I will allow it. Saint Petersburg is blockaded, so yes, yeah, Stalin is going after this Russia. He, he desperately needs this. And then we'd see our first border between uh, Soviet Union, Soviet Union, and Nazi Germany. I don't think it's gonna happen. I really don't. I'm sorry. I don't mean it be a Debbie Downer. Oh, it could be not with. Uh, Okay, so who spawned those barbarians? Was it Germany or what? I'm imagining it's Germany. They have to have some problems with with happiness, especially considering. Remember, peace deals are way bigger. I didn't even think about that. I did not make a comment about that, and I apologize. Novgorod was at 18 population. Do you realize how much more powerful Germany just got because they peaced out for the city and they didn't capture it through conquest? Like, cause they just got really strong. They also that so they've got to be the ones that that spawn these riflemen accidentally. They just got an 18 population city. You never you never see that through conquest. You'll you'll eventually get to that you'll eventually get to that position. You might eventually get to that population. But uh, yeah, you never really see that all that much. So Stalin is trying, but he, without any sort of support from the uh, the Swedish and Norwegian Car Na Navy or Caravel, whatever you want to say I don't think that they can do it if, if, if Sweden Norway took everything over there then maybe that'd be enough support for Stalin I don't know why they'd be su supporting the Soviet Union but you know just just throwing that out there how's Egypt doing Egypt's doing a little bit better but I think I think the Congo are gonna go to war again soon I need to check in on the cultural overview screen. That's what I need to do. So that's what we'll we'll do. You know who else I kind of am underrating is Molly. Molly looks pretty, pretty good, because nobody around them is that threatening. Like just nobody. Maybe the Vandals, because the Vandals can. The Vandals actually have a pretty strong hold over the Mediterranean. Look at that. Yeah. Wait for the Vandals to go to war. But knowing the AI in this game, the AI would go to war with, with Carlos of Spain and there would just be this bloody war, this bloody naval battle, and and nothing would result at all. It would just, would just everyone loses units. We'll see if that happens. I, I feel like that's a feeling. You know, just kind of scrolling around the map, I'm starting to notice a lot more units than before. I'm starting to notice the AI is building... A lot more units than we've seen. 
Because I'm like, I'm like, oh, well, if this Civ goes to war, then they're probably going to take something. Look at the Champa. Champa might be gearing up for somebody. Maybe Burma. Maybe to go after this Burmese, Burma, Burma city. Something like that. Um, that's not a super good example. The Moguls are a great example. Because Moria has nobody here in the capital. Even though Moria has all these colonies all over the place. Same thing. I mean, Harappan... The Harappan Empire probably wouldn't be able to stop a, a Mughal invasion. Why does it sound so good? A Mughal invasion. Maybe I, maybe I've heard it before. Hey, look at that! Yes, we've got these guys are settling everywhere. And yes, I'm refraining to pr from pronouncing their name too, but uh, you know they've got this fortress, and they've got a few other colonies around the world. Argentina is still holding back. They are still, they're, they've, they've, they've defended themselves really well. And they've lost a lot of units in the process, but because Argentina is so strong and because of their location, they don't have to worry about anybody. That was it. I think that was the last chance South America had from, from stopping Argentina. It's not going to happen anymore. They're not going to stop them. Yeah, it's, it's unlikely. The Sioux are a good example of a Civ that I think has a lot of units that could... Well, I don't know who they'd go to war with. Maybe kick the British out. You could definitely kick the British out. This is pretty much British Canada. Canada. You know what I'm saying. Sometimes I do that on purpose. Sometimes I don't. Say British Canada. But this time I, I did it accidentally. But they could easily kick the British out. All these three cities. Gone. That's a safe bet. Because the British have, actually, now that I look at them, they really don't have much. I'd be surprised if the British, the British could probably stop America. But America and Texas both going after the British, probably not. I don't think they can stop, stop all of that. So, I think in the coming video, we're going to see one of two things happen. Either... There, there are a hand, I'm starting to see a handful of civs with a lot of units. There's been a lot of units being built up. And I think over the course of the next coming videos, either those civs are going to go to war with each other, which for some reason, that's what I'm leaning towards, or they're going to start taking a lot of people out. Because there are, there are still a lot of civs that don't have much at all. And then there's France that, you know, there's someone like France who's rebuilt. Look at that. I mean, a video ago, France was at one unit. And now they're, you know, in this renaissance of military. Louis XIV has, has gotten them out of their struggle. St. Petersburg really close to falling, but... I'm um, not really close to falling, but... Uh, what, why did I say that? St. Petersburg is under siege, but it's not going to fall. I wonder if these barbarians are helping. They're probably just being very annoying. Novgorod losing a ton of population, though. I mean, three. That's still a big deal. These barbarians are only going to continue to pillage the crap out of things. And I don't think Germany cares at all about taking taking care of those. Oh, they, yeah, they kind of do. Or unless this, this... That might be somebody else helping them. Yeah, that, that, that could definitely be... Somebody else helping them. But anyways, we're going to stop right there. Sue going after Byzantium. But they're safe there. And uh, now Bulgaria has pieced out and given Sidon to Egypt. Very strange game. Needless to say, this has been really weird. But over the break, I'm going to definitely push the campaign by a few turns. Uh, just to see what happens. Thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you guys next time.